All right, then good morning, everybody. I think let's take this opportunity to welcome Dr. Jaydeep. We have Dr. Jaydeep with us here. Dr. Jaydeep is a graduate of Tver State Medical University and is one of those very few people who passed their foreign medical graduate examination in India in the first attempt with very good marks. He has got a special flair for clinical pharmacology and his name has been nominated yeah. by the university by none less than the dean himself. Yeah. And that is the reason why he is here with us. And he has been very gracious enough to give us his time and to take this class on clinical pharmacology of GI system. Over to you, Dr. Jaydeep. Welcome to Lincoln American University. It's a privilege to invite you to take this class. And I request you to start your class on clinical pharmacology related to GI system. So hello, I am Dr. Jaydeep Datta. First of all, I am just giving you a brief introduction about myself. I passed from Russia in, from Tver State Medical University and I have completed my MBBS and MD in General Physician. Today, I will be taking classes on pharmacology on the topic as you already seen in the screen. It's a drug absorption from the gastrointestinal tract. This Topic, this GIT topic, I can explain that GIT topic is a very, very, very vast topic in the point of medicine, in the point of surgery, because the everything lies about the diagnosis of the patient. After that, a little portion of the GIT comes in pharma and that little point of pharma today, I will deal with you. So. And one more thing, before start of the lecture, can anyone say me how many of you love pharmacology? So this is a basic lecture outline by which I will start the GIT. First of all, the, I will give a brief little bit discussion about the anatomy of the GIT. Second, the physiology of the GIT and what are the drugs in this gastrointestinal tract and how are they effective? I will explain some drugs which are affecting in the GI secretions. The second most, the laxative, the anti-diarrheal, and the emetics and the anti-emetic. This is the basic physiology, or you may say, this is the basic anatomy which we know from the very first time when we used to, when we were in class eight, the science started. This is the oral. This is the physiology of swallowing. In physiology of swallowing, there will be the three phases. The first phase is the oral cavity, the mouth. The second phase will be the pharyngeal, and the third phase will be the esophageal phase. In the oral phase, there is nothing about just simply chewing and lubrication. In pharyngeal phase, there is not much about. There will be the vocal cord, the approximation of the vocal cord will be there. The laryngeal apparatus will be moved up and downward this much. But the most important phase lies of the GIT lies in the esophagus because this is the phase where the peristalsis start. If I say in elaborate way, what is the peristalsis mean? The peristalsis is nothing less like a wave. When we used to yes, go sir. to the sea, we used to see the wave coming one by one, no? It's just like a wave. What is wave? It's, this wave is like a muscular contraction in tibular structure, where in the esophagus and in intestine, this peristalsis. It is characteristic by the alternative contraction and the relaxation, which pushes the ingested food to the duodenum. Okay? This is the exact definition of the peristalsis. So in peristalsis, there are three primary ways of peristalsis, three points. First is the primary way of peristalsis, there will be and after followed by the secondary and followed by the tertiary. So I will not explain going into the primary, secondary and tertiary because that's not my point of view in teaching. There's a physiological aspect and the physiology teacher will go through that thing. I will only just give a brief outline. After that comes the esophagus. In GIT, the esophagus, as I already said, it plays a very vital role in esophagus. In esophagus, there are four constrictions. 
the first constriction we know is the cricopharyngeal constriction this cricopharyngeal constriction if anybody wants to write he or she can write this is a cricopharyngeal constriction that constriction is distance from the upper incisor is 15 cm and the cricopharyngeal sphincter is the narrowest entry point in the git if someone ask what is the narrowest entry point in git just simply say cricopharyngeal sphincter the second the first is 15 cm from the incisor second constriction is the 22.5 cm from the aortic arc third one is the 27.5 cm from the left bronchus and the fourth one is 37.5 from the hiatus so in esophagus there are four constriction first is 15 cm from the upper incisor second is 22.5 cm from the aortic arc third one is 27.5 cm from the left bronchus and the fourth one is 37.5 from the hiatus in esophagus there are two sphincters the four constrictions and two sphincters a uh, upper esophagus have the sphincter which is anatomical but the lower esophagus which is a sphincter that is a physiological and i will not go into that matter okay and as you know and after that comes the stomach and in no stomach with the fundus serosa lesser curvature greater curvature and the pyloric sphincter opening and the, after that gradually comes to the duodenum in git this slide holds the most important thing why i mention this slide because in order to show you the three layers of the git the mucosa is the innermost layer the toughest layer is the sus mucosa and after that the thickest layer is the muscularis layer all we have studied from the histology anatomy okay and this is the finger which this is the wave like finger the finger like projections of the surface mucous cells lamina propria are there and there are different types of layer oblique muscles layer circular muscles layer longitudinal layer and that layer will be discussed by some different teacher now let's come to the drug for which the topic today is like the drug affecting the gi secretion what are the drug that affect and how that drugs is effective in git secretion these are the five drugs for gi secretions the first most every gi secretions drug they are all start with the treatment of the peptic ulcer okay hello we can hear you all starts with the treatment of the peptic ulcer and how the peptic and how all these drugs will helpful in the peptic ulcer disease i will explain one by one in this there is a histamine h2 receptor antagonist or blocker after that the antacids how antacids play a role in the peptic ulcer the fourth one is the proton pump inhibitor how they are helpful in peptic and the five one is the mucosal protectant and the sixth one is the prostaglandin analog these are all the categories of drug they are useful in the treatment of peptic ulcer and i will gradually explain how are they helpful one by one in our git when the pharmacological point of affects occur that only the three disease which we can pharmacological affect we can think of one is a peptic ulcer other one is a gastritis and other one is the stress ulcer yeah one can say no sir one can simply think about the inflammatory bowel disease the crohn's disease the ulcerative colitis yes beside these three the peptic ulcer gastritis and stress ulcer there are some also other disease which we can think about from the pharmacological point of view the crohn's disease but ultimately that the crohn's disease that the ulcerative colitis ultimately they will come to a certain point to a surgery also so in inflammatory in the end of this topic i will show you in that how the pharmacological point of aspect in that inflammatory bowel disease also what is peptic ulcer disease how is it occurs it occurs only because due to the imbalance 
between the aggressive and the protective factor and why i start the what i start means the aggressive and the protective factor how come all we know that in stomach hcl is produced is it the chief cells which produce the hcl and the, there are many cells in the stomach such as the peptic cell which present the chief cells and peptic cells which secrete pepsin the auxentic and the parietal cells sorry the auxentic and the parietal cells which secrete hcl the mucus which secrete mucin cells and the g cell secrete some gastric hormone in stomach the hcl is produced and this is the hcl which is the most dangerous and the aggressive factor in the peptic ulcer disease and if there will be an aggressive factor on the or the dangerous factor then definitely god has made something for the in the terms of defensive also so other the defensive factor are mucus and the bicarbonate so i will explain each and everything how the how hcl became a most aggressive factor in the peptic ulcer or the mucus become a protective factor in peptic ulcer disease this is the most important still now what i have said to you they are not as important as this diagram even in the today all our conversation will be lying on this diagram because this is the most important thing in a git please if you remember this diagram throughout your life you will not forget any drug or their mechanism of action in git so what is this diagram what is that h plus k plus is all about suppose this is a parietal lining of this is a parietal cells of the stomach this is a, this square is the parietal cell of the stomach okay which produce hcl in this parietal cell of the stomach there are two pumps one is a hydrogen pump and the other one is a potassium pump please pay attention to this diagram because i am saying this is one of the most important diagram in the git it is the of the this the boundary the boundary which you see this is the the square this is a suppose imagine this is a parietal lining of the stomach and what this parietal cells of the stomach secrete again i am saying this is the most important diagram in the git imagine this the outer border is the parietal cells which secrete acid hcl there are the two pump h plus the hydrogen and the potassium pump this pump regulates the production of the acid in order to increase the acid we all know that our git is very acidic ph is 4 that the acidic is been maintained by this pump what the pump name hydrogen and the potassium pump if there is the pump hydrogen potassium pump there are other things also which are helping this pump you know to generate much more hcl in the parietal lining of the stomach who are they helping the h plus and the potassium and the k plus pump the number one so who are the factors that helps this pump in you know, order to secrete much more acid in the git the factors are none other than else the first factor the most important factor in the git which helps mean which stimulate stimulate means enhance the factor they are working just the make the mechanism much more faster in chemistry we learn the catalyst what is the role of the catalyst to enhance the reaction to make the reaction faster just like the ach the first one ach what does ach stand for the ach stands for acetylcholine this ach directly stimulate this hydrogen and the potassium pump to generate much acid in the git lining the other one is the histamine h2 h2 receptor the histamine receptor they also stimulate this hydrogen and potassium pump to create to generate hcl into the parietal lining of the stomach the other one is the gastrin again other one is the gastrin this is also the same thing the gastrin also enhances this hydrogen potassium pump but one the most important this prostaglandin pge2 what does this pge2 stand prostaglandin enzyme inhibitor 
this by the name we can understand that it doesn't stimulate it inhibit what does the inhibition mean it stops the working of the hydrogen potassium pump to create to generate acid okay it inhibit the hydrogen potassium pump in so that the hydrogen potassium pump will not be able to make acid hcl and the fourth most point is the proton pump the pump which i have already talking about the h plus pump and the k plus pump this is the proton pump so again i am explaining this diagram because throughout my lecture this is the most important diagram where every queries where every solution answer of the pharmacology of git lies in this diagram so this is the parietal lining of the stomach the square which produces the hcl in the lining so there is the one pump hydrogen pump and the potassium pump which facilitates the production of the hcl who else helps the this proton pump hydrogen and potassium pump the first and the foremost is the acetylcholine after that the h2 receptor histamine and the third one is the gastrin what does the gastrin it also helps in this hydrogen potassium pump and the fourth one is the third one is the pge2 what the pge2 prostaglandin enzyme inhibitor it inhibits this pump so that this pump is not be able to produce hcl and this pump is known as a proton pump h plus and the k plus so the main treatment just see why I, in the second of my slide now i will discuss about the treatment of the peptic ulcer disease in order to treat the peptic ulcer disease first what should i have to do i have to make sure that the acid content of the git is reduced how will i make sure the acid of the git is reduced how simply if is a very logical answer suppose i will i will remove histamine now only focus on ach what does ach stands ach stands for acetyl choline acetyl choline the is just now remove the histamine and gastrin from your eye point of view that's acetyl choline how the i will treat the peptic ulcer disease you know to treat the peptic ulcer disease i have to reduce the acid secretions from the git how i will reduce that acid secretion in the git from git as i already mentioned you this acetyl choline helping this pump so definitely and surely if i stop acetyl choline if i say acetyl choline you will not be able to help the hydrogen and potassium pump there's a proton pump then the acid will not produce just right now forget histamine gastrin everything just focus on acetylcholine what does the role of acetylcholine as i already explained to you that the acetylcholine helps in ma making this pump what acetylcholine helps in producing hcl much more so in order to reduce the hcl the main treatment of the peptic ulcer disease is to reduce the acid content from the git so as i said that acetylcholine helps this h plus and k plus pump to ensure to produce much much acid so if i stop acetylcholine from its work so the acid will not produce i said that this is the parietal cells which produce acid hcl okay there is a pump h plus and the k plus and this pump name is the proton pump this pump allows to increase to produce more acid in the git and who help this pump the first is the acetylcholine ach the second one is the histamine and the other one is the gastrin this three helps this proton pump to produce much much hcl into the git into the stomach but the other one is the pge2 prostaglandin enzyme inhibitor it doesn't help this pump to produce acid else it allows the pump it says the pump not to produce acid and the other one is the fourth one is this one is the proton pump the h plus and the k plus now in order to reduce the acid content in my next slide i will just see there's a treatment written regarding the peptic ulcer disease 
and the first line is there to decrease acid and how to decrease acid and how to decrease acid just see over here first of all i will ask just remove from a point of view histamine and gastrin just focus on ach what does this ach ach is acetylcholine this ach uh, now i have to i want to produce i do not i doesn't want to produce acid into the stomach but ach already helps the, this pump to produce acid so it's not just like a cherry on the cake to say acetylcholine that now please i don't want acid production and you please stop is not an issue what and how i have to stop the acid but before that can anyone say me from this participant that is the what is the receptor what is the receptor present in the parietal cell in the autonomic nervous system i will teach you what is the role of parasympathetic system what is the role of the sympathetic system because parasympathetic system and the sympathetic system these are just like a twin brother how will you understand the what is the role of parasympathetic and the sympathetic i will as you asked me so i am just giving a one minute discussion about that parasympathetic system in heart is always decrease but sympathetic in heart always increase in parasympathetic heart decrease but other organs it increases its secretion same reverse sympathetic heart increases other organ it decreases in parietal cell someone say me their muscarinic receptor yes in parietal cell there is a one receptor name as m3 receptor in parietal cells but i made it over here m1 receptor then where does this m1 receptors come from m1 receptor is present in gastric ganglia of the stomach m1 receptor then why i write m1 receptor just pay attentive to this thing m1 receptor is a one receptor which is present in the gastric ganglia how this m1 receptor will do m1 receptor will secretly come to the parietal cells of the stomach and release the acetylcholine and release acetylcholine but the m3 is a one receptor which is present in the parietal cells now everyone whenever i used to say this thing everyone used to say me if they know sir then why can i when why we cannot give the m3 blocker because you said that the hcl is produced by the parietal cells the acid production suppose if we give the m3 blocker blocker means that thing will stop the production of the acid will stop then why we cannot give to the m3 blocker why we will give something which is present in the gastric ganglia that is m1 and after that it will come to the parietal cells to secrete acetylcholine it's better to give m3 receptor directly and put an end to this acid production why we cannot give directly that m3 blocker which is present in the parietal cells because the m3 blocker not only present in the stomach but it also present in the smooth inner muscles and directly if we give that m3 blocker no so what will happen as a result of consequences the gastric contraction will slow down the peristalsis will not occur whatever the acid the old acid the the stay over acid which was there no will automatically remain over there there will not be this because the peristalsis is gone because that the m3 blocker which is present in the parietal cells no this are also present in the stomach the smooth muscles what i already explained the treatment of the git in peptic ulcer disease first of all we have to decrease the acid production how we will decrease the acid production hcl and where the hcl is produced it is produced from the parietal cells of the stomach second it is a proton pump h plus and k plus is facilitated is stimulated it helps in the secretion of acid and how does this hcl is stimulated by in the last slide i showed the ach acetylcholine there is a histamine h2 and the gastrin is a cck what does this cck i will explain next and it is inhibited by the prostaglandin pge2 okay
this stimulated by ACH, histamine, and the gastrin, and it is inhibited by the PGE2. So my point now, what are the drugs by which the M1 blockers are? Those are the two most important drugs in the M1 blocker, which will reduce the acid content. What are these two drugs? It is very easy to remember. The pirenzepine and the other one is the telenzepine. What are the, these two drugs? The pirenzepine and the other one is the telenzepine. Okay. These are the drugs by which these are the M1 drugs. Just see, I have put an arrow over this hydrogen and the potassium proton pump. Means if I apply this pirenzepine and the telenzepine, after that I put a cross in the pump. Means there are two drugs, pirenzepine and the telenzepine. They will not allow the proton pump to produce much acid in the GIT tract. The H2 blockers, what now? The acetylcholine chapter is removed. Now remove acetylcholine and gastrin from the, now focus on the middle. What is the histamine? From where the histamine is secret? What is the role in histamine? Same, just like acetylcholine, histamine also stimulate, I already explained you that histamine, this see, this histamine also stimulate this pump to produce acid to produce acid. So we have to, again, the concept is same. In acetylcholine, there's an M1 receptor, but in histamine, there's a H2 receptor. If we stop this H2 receptor in helping this proton pump, then no more acid will produce over there. So what is the histamine is secret? From where the histamine? Histamine secrets in the parietal cells of the stomach. In histamine, there's a one blocker. The receptor, not blocker, it's a receptor. The H2 is a receptor of the histamine. Sometimes we all have a very good friends in our college life. Suppose, for example, if I don't have the money, but still I can manage some bucks from one of my friends to buy something. This is the same thing over here also. Just remember these two, two things. Histamine have a very two good friends. One is the acetylcholine and the other one is the gastrin. Sometimes what the histamine used to do, as I already explained, that histamine used to do the production of the acid in the parietal lining of the stomach. Sometimes when histamine stops, the acetylcholine being a good friend of histamine, he will come. Simultaneously, the gastrin also is a very good friend of histamine. They will ask together that, okay, my friend histamine is not able to produce any acid. So how they can help? Simultaneously, uh, they can also help in histamine in producing acid. Again, I am explaining this thing. Histamine helps the proton pump to produce acid, much acid. Sometimes when histamine work is not be able to do, when histamine cannot do his work successfully, that these two friends, acetylcholine from the left hand side and from the right hand side, the gastrin, they will come together to help out histamine. But histamine secret, to help in the secretion of the histamine from the parietal cells and the receptor which is present in the histamine is the H2 receptor. See, the H2 blockers. Now we will give the block to produce his to. Now we'll give the H2 blocker Y so that histamine will not be able to produce any acid. What are the H2 blockers are there? Just one of the easiest to remember. Just simply remember every H2 blocker ends with tidine. Whenever you see any tidine at the end, you know to recognize a drug, no? Every drug, because there are so many drugs, you are impossible to remember each and every drug. Even no one can remember. Believe me, even God can also can't remember every drug. So how to remember in every drug within cardiovascular system, GIT, autonomic nervous system, respiratory, CNS. You just see the last ending and the, the last end defined all. See, the every drug, which are the H2 blocker, they all end with tidine. And what's the famous drug in, which comes under the H2 blocker is the simetidine. After that, the ranitidine. The second one is the famotidine. And the third one is the nizatidine. 
tdin whenever it will comes to the tdin you will understand that this is the h2 blocker which will not which will help histamine not to produce acid in the git lining in the parietal cell where the histamine is secret but there are some peculiar drugs which we have to know so that's why i have write cimetidin as the top most why i write cimetidin in the top most because cimetidin is a one drug which have lots of lots of complication one thing we all know that like, there is a one gynecology gynecomastia just remember one mnemonic throughout your life or if you want to write you can write it down the mnemonic the drug which can cause gynecomastia just please write the mnemonic and the mnemonic is famous disco d i s c o disco and what does the disco stand d i is a digoxin s is a spironolactone c is cimetidin and o stands for estrogen okay these are all the drugs which can cause gynecomastia so these are the drugs which can cause the gynecomastia and believe me these are the drugs right right now no other drug huh if anyone can say you name one antifungal drug which can also cause gynecomastia yes you can say there one drug which can cause the gynecomastia is the ketoconazole the other one drug is the ketoconazole beside that disco drug the other one drug is the antifungal drug and this antifungal drug i will explain in the antimicrobial topic and this the, the drug which can cause gynecomastia beside this no one causes gynecomastia so within that drug the disco that the c is the cimetidin and where that c is the c is the h2 blocker the histamine receptor the h2 blocker not only it causes gynecomastia cimetidin it is a, one of the most powerful enzyme inhibitor what does this most powerful microsomal enzyme inhibitor mean microsomal enzyme inhibitor mean it interacts with the work of other drugs such as antidepressant drug if someone is taking alcohol and if someone is taking the cimetidin that cimetidin will in interfere the mechanism of action of the alcohol if someone taking antidepressant drug cimetidin will interfere with the antidepressant drug if someone is taking anticoagulant such as heparin warfarin cimetidin will interfere his work so this is the most powerful strong microsomal enzyme inhibitor plus there are more or less side effects of cns symptoms i will explain shortly just see what the what i explained right now these are all written over here see the h2 blocker these are all ends with tdin pharmacokinetic and the pharmacodynamic what does this two mean pharmacokinetic means effect of just remember this two line simply you will not forget anything what is the pharmacokinetic effect of body on drug and pharmacodynamic is effect of drug on the body in pharmacodynamic will discuss the antagonist the the what are the drug which can causes on the body effect of drug on the body is a pharmacodynamic and the effect of body on the drug is known as a pharmacokinetic okay so pharmacodynamic is a drug action just see the h2 blockers are the antagonist the receptor which presents in the parietal cells of the stomach i said earlier that the h2 the secret of the histamine which is present in the parietal cells of the stomach what does they do this blockage results in the inhibition of the hormone gastrin there are two hormone in physiology i know definitely you know the gastrin and the ghrelin g h e r l i n gastrin and ghrelin these are the two hormones which makes everyone feel hungry this blockage results in the inhibition of the hormone gastrin the third most this also decrease the production of the gastric acid from the parietal cells and this is our all main discussion lies because we have to reduce the acid secretions so we are treating the peptic ulcer disease so we somehow we have to reduce the acid and last the chief cells will secrete less pepsinogen these are the blocker with their effect the pharmacodynamic drug action but i have already said you but this 
H2 blockers, they are also helpful in certain cases. There's a one syndrome, which is known as zollinger elson syndrome. zollinger elson syndrome is one certain thing where this is the helpful. Now, as I said, that this drug, tyrine, that H2, this have a lot of very side effects, cimetidine. And what are the side effects? In GIT, it can cause diarrhea or constipation. In CNS, it may cause dizziness, headache, drowsiness, hallucination, confusion. In cardio, it is related to the hypotension. And this line, I already mentioned you, that cimetidine is the drug which is responsible for the gynecomastia and importance in males. Not so much importance, but it is many more play a role in gynecomastia in males. One more I am repeating, what's the other drug which can cause gynecomastia? DI, the mnemonic is DISCO. DI stands for digoxin, A stands for spirinolactone, C stands for cimetidine, O stands for estrogen. And one drug from the antifungal group which can also cause gynecomastia is the ketoconazole. Again, I have already said that cimetidine is one of the most microsomal enzyme inhibitor. It means that it causes very drug to drug interactions. See, I've already explained that and that I written. Cimetidine, famotidine, ranitidine are metabolized in the liver so they can slow the mechanism of excretion of other drugs leading to the increased concentration. Again, I already explained that how cimetidines interact with the other drugs. For example, anticoagulants. If I taking anticoagulant at the same time, if I used to taking the cimetidine, then cimetidine will interfere with the anticoagulants, just like heparin, warfarin, protamine, sulfate, anything. Alcohol, phenytoin, antidepressant. Because cimetidine is the most powerful drug of the microsomal enzyme inhibitor. If any, because if anyone asks the H2 blocker no, then believe me that the teacher, that the invigilator wants to know about the side effects of the cimetidine drug because cimetidine is the one drug which is very potent drug with its most potent side effects. If anyone asks say me one drug name with cimetidine H2 blocker, then definitely believe the teacher wants to know about this drug, cimetidine, because it is lots and lots of drug to drug interaction. It has lots and lots of side effects, I've already said. Uh, every tidine, in, over here, every tidine has a side effects. Okay. But in case of cimetidine, it's little more. It can cause diarrhea much more as causes to the ramitidine, as causes to this. As causes to this ranitidine, as causes to this famitidine, and as causes to the nizatidine. These are the drug to drug interactions with the tidine. This drug can interact with cimetidine. There's the anticoagulants drug, phenytoin drug, alcohol, and the antidepressants. Now we are now you can come back to this photo, this diagram, because all our discussions will lie only in this diagram. I have explained the acetylcholine, how we will stop acetylcholine in order to reduce HCL, second, histamine, and thirdly, and by God's grace, there's a one more, but I doesn't written three. Why? Because gastrin also helps in the production of acid. The gastrin also helps this protein pump, H plus and the K plus. In gastrin, there's a one receptor name. That receptor is a CCK. Cholecystokinin, I have written over there. It's just a minute, I can show you. See, it's stimulated by acetylcholine, which I already discussed with you. Histamine H2, I already discussed now, gastrin. Just remember only one thing about gastrin, that gastrin have a very specific receptor and that receptor name is CCK. What does the CCK stand? CCK is nothing about cholecystokinin. Cholecystokinin. This cholecystokinin also helps this proton pump to produce much acid in the GIT. But still now, no one discovered any medicine for the gastrin cholecystokinin receptor blocker. So there is no medicine for the gastrin cholecystokinin receptor blocker. So PGE2 
is inhibited so i will explain this thing later on now i will directly explain this to proton pump this hydrogen and the potassium pump is the h plus and the k plus pump okay before that proton pump i will now i will this make i will this pge2 prostaglandin inhibitor i will start with this pge2 as we already explained you that these three drugs the these three acetylcholine histamine and gastrin these three help this pump this stimulate but prostaglandin on the other hand just see the where i written three pge2 prostaglandin on the other hand inhibit it means it does not allow this pump to produce much acid so our first it, our first line is to decrease the acid secretion so we can already decrease this hcl by the three things the acetylcholine blocker histamine blocker and there is no gastrin blocker so we, we as such we have no medicine for the gastrin but now we don't want to block now we don't want to stop acid now what we want to do we want that this prostaglandin will work because it's inhibit if it work the acid will not produce because it inhibits this h plus and k plus pump so it is a prostaglandin enzyme inhibitor is the strongest proton uh, peptic ulcer is the most strongest drug of the peptic ulcer disease how it will inhibit this proton pump it will what how does this pg2 will do in my first slide i said this is the protective factor the mucus and the bicarbonate and the aggressive factor is the hcl as i already said in peptic ulcer disease first thing i have i want to reduce the hcl and for reducing hcl i have three options histamine number 1 second two will be the uh, acetylcholine and third is the gastrin cholecystokinin but now my fourth is the i now i want this pump to work so that if it works the prostaglandin will work so no in acid will form so this pg2 what is his mechanism of action what he will do he will produce the most defensive factor the mucus and the bicarbonate and as a result the mucosal blood flow will increase but many of us but suppose one example if not pg2 work then what will happen if pg2 will not work then what will happen as i said you because pg2 is inhibited if pg2 will not work then what then the acid secretion will much more increasing increases and the ulcer will be formed anyone no, not right now sorry so there is one drug in his aid n s a i d what does this non steroid anti inflammatory drug nsaid is a one drug which inhibits the pge2 nsaid is a drug which say to pge2 that please don't work nsaid is the one drug which always make a barrier in the work of pge2 it will not allow pge2 to do his work very successfully so pge2 whenever we used to take nsaid complexlamb acetamol this thing pg2 will not be able to work as a result pg2 will not work the ulcer the peptic ulcer will much more increase any there is a one question if anybody wants to return he or she can return this is the one of the most important question i have come across in mci i have come across in indian pg exam i have come across in other state in ems exam also but i have come in any other exams also there is a one favorite question whoever make the paper the nsaid induced peptic ulcer what is the drug of choice for nsaid induced specific peptic ulcer the answer will be the misoprostol because pge2 drug one drug is there that drug is known as misoprostol just like acetylcholine m1 drug is there which is the pirenzapine and telenzapine the same thing the pge2 drug is also there that drug is known as misoprostol but same thing just like cimetidine misoprostol is one of the most toxic drug in terms of when it comes to the when it comes in the term pregnancy 
suppose if someone is pregnant that time we can't give misoprostol as misoprostol can lead to that abortion misoprostol is a very toxic drug it can lead to the abortion the pge2 drug misoprostol it can lead to the abortion it lead can lead to the nsaid it it can lead to the diarrhea so misoprostol is the one drug so in this question in this pg2 just remember only one question nsaid non steroid anti inflammatory drug induced peptic ulcer and what is the drug of choice the drug of choice will be the misoprostol now i come to this proton pump inhibitor the last thing what is the proton pump the last thing is the proton pump now what i have to do i have to make sure that this pump doesn't work because if this pump doesn't work no acid will production okay and if this no acid will production then we can definitely we can heal the peptic ulcer disease and how come proton pump inhibitor still one thing as earlier i said that the tdin over here you can just wait a minute ha huh. the tdin is the it can be used for the treatment of the zollinger rosen syndrome gut but if anyone ask you what is the drug of choice for the gastric ulcer disease what is the drug of choice for the zollinger rosen syndrome don't mark tdin because tdin will be always kept in the first option when you are used to give exam the invigilator will always keep that cost, that answer on the top where student always they know that student will always mark the tdin as a first option simetidine ranitidine fumetidine ha huh. this tdin is used in the zollinger rosen syndrome this tdin can be used in the treatment of gut but they are not the drug of choice the drug of choice for the gastroesophageal reflux disease but the drug of choice for the zollinger rosen syndrome is the proton pump inhibitor ppi and the, also the peptic ulcer disease but one thing about this bad thing about this proton pump drug one uh, before that i will make another action before see what are the drugs which comes under the ppi proton pump inhibitor these are the drugs which all ends with prazole just like h2 blocker the all drug which ends with the tdin and the ppi drug the all ends with the prazoles and the prazoles which are the omeprazole everyone knows omeprazole lanisoprazole esmoprazole pantoprazole whenever the prazole ends always remember this is the proton pump inhibitor ppi whenever the tdin ends always remember that this is the drug which is help in the histamine h2 blocker whenever the pirenzapine telenzapine make sure that this is the drug of the acetylcholine m1 receptor so these are the drugs which comes under the ppi proton pump inhibitor but before explaining this thing is proton pharmacodynamic there i will explain one more thing this proton pump inhibitor suppose omeprazole as we can see that everybody is to take in our house omeprazole everyone as if someone has some gastric problem we can easily say okay take omeprazole take pantoprazole lanisoprazole hello pantoprazole hello we usually is to say take prazole omeprazole lanisoprazole without thinking anything esmoprazole pantoprazole but one thing that our relative will not know how this prazoles will work but being a pharma being a doctor one thing we have to know that how this prazoles will work how suppose i am just explaining you how the prazoles will work whenever we is to take the prazoles directly directly we is to is a, is a tablet from the mouth okay this prazoles directly go to the stomach okay in stomach i have already explained this, this is the acidic medium if this prazole goes to the acidic medium it will dissolve over there it be it can't be cured the peptic ulcer disease so what before prazole then what is the mechanism of action of the prazole whenever we used to take the prazole whenever from the stomach it directly comes to the intestine where intestine it will absorb it will enter into the blood 
and come then to the parietal cells and mix with them because the prazoles are the acid labile. In stomach, it is the acidity where the PPI can easily break down. So every omeprazole, lanisoprazole, every proton pump inhibiting inhibitor, this drug, whenever they used to make, they made by a very special covering, and that covering is to call the enteric coating. Why they used to make coating? Because the, my motto is to work over the specific site of action. Because if I, if the, if this PPI drug, they they are not made without this coating, enteric coating they will not be able to reach their specific site of action. They will go to the stomach where they will be absorbed over there, inhibit over there, absorbed. So before so that they are made with some special covering or entry protein and so that I want the drug go to the blood and you know what the medium over there is a basic alkaline medium. So over there I want my action to be best. So this drug, whenever they given, whenever they made, they used to mate with some special covering or entry covering. And so this prazole is always a pro drug. What does a pro drug mean? Pro drug means a drug which changes its phase. Means, suppose the drug which changes from the inactive to active position. Inactive means in this, in this medium I'm inactive but whenever I change I will change this medium from acidic to basic uh, whenever I will change the pH I will raise the pH from 4 to 7.5 it will become an active medium this is a known as a pro drug and this proton pump inhibitor is a pro drug it so we have to change the medium from black is all as I said it's an alkaline medium 7.4 where in the GIT is an acidic medium less than 4 so you we have to give some enteric coating so that this proton pump inhibitor can directly go to the blood and to do their and good action or the, at the site of their action. But everything have an advantage and disadvantage. In our house, in our family, everyone's family, they take prazole, omeprazole, every pra anything. But everything is a good thing and bad thing. What is the bad thing about the prazole is that it is the permanent inhibition of the proton pump. Irreversible. It will definitely not reverse the proton pump. Once damage is damaged. And these drugs are also known as the heat and run, run drug. What is the heat and run drug mean? Heat and run drug means, please don't mind. I will take one example of Salman Khan. Okay, I don't know whether he made a heat and run, but still I will explain because. Heat and run means I hit and then I go out from that situation. What Salman Khan did. Okay. This drug also do the same thing. This drug, they don't know. They comes to the blood because due to of their entry coating, they do their action and within a fraction of a second, they go out. And this is known as a heat and run drug. So they will do their action and after when the action is finished out, they will leave that site without a point of hesitation just like salman khan did hit and run just like the proton pump inhibitor also just remember if someone say give me one example of the heat and run drugs yes in cns heat and run drugs are mostly i will say in cns but huh, if anyone say give one example from the git then definitely the your answer will be the proton pump inhibitor because these are the heat and run drugs this omeprazole, lanisoprazole, and the pantoprazole. What are the side effects of this prazole? The side effect will be the, nothing much more side effect, but huh, if some patients take for a long time, then he or she can have a deficiency in calcium and that lead to the osteoporosis and else B12 deficiency that can lead to the megaloblastic anemia. Because this two, because this prazole for a long time can may decrease the calcium and the vitamin B12. Now I will show the pharmacodynamic. See, they act at a specific secretory surface to prevent the final step of the acid production into the stomach. So this is the main reason why they are called as heat and run drag. And second, this pump, the H plus and the potassium ATPs, H and K plus. This is the H and K plus and this is the pump which I have to omit. 
So this is the pump, potassium and hydrogen and potassium. This pump is a proton pump, PPI. And what about the clinical use of the PPI? I have already said it may causes the guard, drug of choice for the guard, esophagitis, benign gastric ulcer, and also the long-term maintenance therapy of the erosis disorders. Now, the next topic is the antacids, but as the time is over, the antacid I will discuss in, in the next class, antacid. And if anyone has any doubt in next lecture, he or she can definitely ask me without any hesitation, because I want this lecture to be a between two conversation. So when you can directly ask me the questions, no, then pharma will be very, very easier.